Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Recoup and Algonauts collaboration once again. What's up, Andrew? How are you doing? What's up, Coop? Doing well. How about yourself, man? I'm all right. So today <laughs> we have the good fortune of being with the Metapunks. Here they are. We're with Daria, Nikita, and Metaboy. They are all co-founders of the Metapunks, and uh, I'm super excited to talk to you guys. We're excited as well. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Hello. Thank you very much for inviting us. We're, of course. It's our pleasure. Yeah. I know that the Algonauts, there's a lot of, uh, you know, Metapunk profile pictures in the Algonauts. There's a lot of guys that are excited about the uh, about Metapunk. So I know everybody, we have a bunch of questions that we want to ask you. But before we start, um, I know you guys are located in a region of the world that is, you know, there's a lot of conflict. Uh, how are you guys doing? Is everything, you know, are you in Russia or are you located near Russia? Now in Russia only I am. So I'm in Russia now and it's... Mm -hmm. It's not easy to see what's happening here. It's not easy to support it. Like, we are totally against the their decision that somebody makes. So, yeah. you know, I have yeah, I no word for that. Yeah. Well, okay. I can only I can only imagine. I'm sorry, Nikita. Go ahead. Well, yeah, I just wanted to add that I left Russia like several months ago, and like I'm currently in Asia. But still, it's really hard because I have like a lot of friends and relatives who are in Russia or in Ukraine, and it's really hard times. And of course, I do not support this uh, dictatorship of our uh, mad uh, old guy. Mm -hmm. And this is all is really. But you know, we're trying not to focus on that and to focus on doing some stuff. I, on I, so I cannot focus on that, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, last it, week was a uh, difficult, of course, to focus. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, and I left to Russia about three years ago and I'm living in the UK. And one of the reasons I left was political situation. But I couldn't imagine what that things like that could happen. And mm -hmm. I want to say that it's not only evil from the Putin. It's also just stu completely stupid. And it does, just doesn't make sense at all. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you guys taking the time and Daria, especially you that is still at the center of all of this. And, um, you know, there we go. Hopefully. So Metapunks, how I, okay. I remember early on, um, la you know, during the Metapunks, there was a lot of like hype. Everybody was super excited that the Metapunks had chosen Algorand. And there was like, you know, there was a huge NFT project coming and there was a lot of enthusiasm. And then I think, you know, there's been a couple of examples of, there may be being a bit of an ambitious, it's a little ambitious, of maybe too big of a project. And you guys, I think, wisely scaled down. So what was your process for, you know, choosing Algorand? And what is your vision for Metapunks? Mm. About uh, choosing Algorand, there is one article which we wrote uh, a long time ago and got quite viral on Algorand. And uh, there are... Um, a lot of uh, technical reasons. Uh, if you're talking about that article in particular, there are a lot of comparisons with other blockchains, and there are some obviously bad choices from NFT collections. Ethereum, also, it's uh, super popular. It's uh, just not very well suitable for NFTs because it's super expensive, as everyone knows, and also it's very bad for environment. Uh, I, there was some comparison with... Um, uh, CO2 equivalent of minting just one NFT on Ethereum, and it was compared to transatlantic flight, if I remember. So it's just horrible. And uh, Algorand, for example, is uh, carbon negative, not in not only neutral. So mm -hmm. minting NFTs is free, but also Algorand mm, just makes it Algorand Foundation make it carbon negative by donating to charities. Right. Yeah, uh, but. Uh, also, we had a lot of uh, plans about the future of the project, and uh, they were a bit wack, and they're still a bit wack, but at the beginning, we were not very sure what we will do apart from the NFTs and the metaverse stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, Algorand was a good choice for us because it's a very early ecosystem, and we are a very technical team. We are three co-founders, and we are all very technical people with a lot of experience programming and so on. 
and mm -hmm. it's uh, really good to be a part of um, uh, emerging ecosystem from competitive standpoint because uh, for example if you do some stuff on ethereum first uh, every, all basic things are already done so there are a lot of for example um, uh, distributed exchanges and uh, just many many DeFi products mm -hmm. and uh, it's really easy to enter this market and for example when there is some team which is very uh, strong in marketing they can just uh, copy a lot of existing solutions mm -hmm. and uh, we can we are not afraid of uh, technical difficulties and we want to be a part of uh, something growing and algo around has actually pretty good uh, foundation. So it's very competitive, but it's just very early. And we yeah. think it's a better place to be. And it's easier to for us because we have strong technical background to compete on such markets. Yeah, I noticed just on that topic real quick that you guys won a the Algorand Innovative Hackathon. Is that was that yeah. recent? Yeah. 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 We won really digital cool. uh, track. Cool. Them, uh, right. How long ago was that? It was like three weeks two, ago, I think. Yeah, three weeks ago. Two weeks ago uh, yeah. Something like that. Really good result. Awesome. Are you all yes. three um, very like technical? Are, are you all three developers or? Yeah, yeah. we all work, work in Google as well as in some other big companies like VK.com or Yandex, which is also Russian Google. Mm -hmm. and some uh, small startups so we yeah. like uh, have experience in different areas like with different languages so yes for us it's we like you know really 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 technical and we actually we enjoy like this uh, uh, problems of Eldoran because like there are some issues with the development because it's still early so like all the tools they are not really uh, adopted for the you know really convenient development so but for us, we like uh, we we enjoy this process because it's like really interesting uh, problem solve. Mm -hmm. like yeah, I was studying Nik with Nikita in the same university, but after that, Nikita studied with with Meta Boy in the same university. So that's how we found each other. Oh, okay. So you guys are real life friends. You guys went to school together and like yeah. In school, I mean, yeah, the university also, but yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, what, that's what, why we have like. Or Lisa, come on. How was was your question? Yeah, I like, like the. Uh, by the way, I, I I I just want to point out for the audience, you you have the uh, your hand wrapped. What happened? Did you? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah. That, at that moment, I should say that yeah, I was fighting some you know Russian waiters and uh, protecting <laughs> like the, war is the over. world ju the world justice. Like I was uh, fighting for. But actually, no. It's, it was just a bike accident. So and oh, okay, it's not happens, not as exciting. So. All right, it's not a uh, it's yes. not out of a movie. Um, yeah. All right. So uh, Andrew, did you have anything you wanted to follow up on from uh, you know the kind of origin of Metapunks? No, I mean I think it's awesome that you guys have known each other for at least a little bit. It's always good to work on a team where you guys are familiar with each other. Um, you know, I think awesome. Congrats on the hackathon. I actually didn't see that come through. So appreciate you, Coop, for bringing that up. Um, it's good to see you guys still participating in, um, you know, in, in the ecosystem outside of just Metapunks. Um, but no, I mean, awesome to have you guys here and, and kind of get to know more about the Metapunk story and, you know, where you guys are trying to go with it. Yeah, I mean, it's nice. It's nice for me to hear. I like to hear that, you, okay, you guys three, you know each other. It's not like just some nft project that people are putting together like you have your website we you know we're able to buy the metapunks from the website so you guys <clears> clearly <throat> are building tools and it's a serious thing and then another thing that a lot of people it's not just a jpeg it's actually functional so um well i want to talk about that and the different like use cases for that and how that kind of process works but so the initial idea was ten thousand metapunks and so talk us through the journey of um you know kind of dwindling that down to, I think it's what, 2,997 now. So uh, yeah. what what was the process there? Yeah, so I think it's hard for us to calculate, you know, the market, the market size. So mm -hmm. and within our community and the basis of community opinion, we decided to uh, remove, we decided to, you know, um, to set only 3,000 and just 
filled up. So just because, you know, if you have a lot of metabanks, so there's a probability that there's, I think, there's, how to say, I think they could add it. So I th just based on our, <laughs> yeah, yeah based, was... based on the fact that you're like, hey, look, okay, so we're selling these and they're not selling as fast as we thought. So we need to create scarcity and, uh, you know, we want to make sure that these are valuable, right? I mean, is, is that, yeah. Yeah, it's how it happened because actually, you know, 10K is just a common number for all NFT collections, like on Ethereum yeah. and so on. And that's why we thought like, okay, 10K, why not? But then we like in the process we realized that uh, Eldorand's uh, market is like really small for the moment. Like and yeah, if we just blow it with holes and K, it would be like really a lot, and they all will cost nothing. So yeah, we would like them to be valuable, and that's why we yeah. cut off the uh, the supply. And yeah, now and I think also, yeah, it's a good idea. Yeah, and yeah. also the, our our goal is was not to sell all everything. Yeah, our goal to make something, some project that help community grow or something like that. So community said, mm -hmm. yeah, we don't have enough people for that. So we decided to reduce this the amount and just go next. Yeah, well, and you see it even with like Zone and their um, AFK elephants. They were like ten thousand, oh. and they're like, just kidding, guys. Like, well, probably more like five. Like, yeah. Uh -huh. So you know, it's. It, I, I think we we see we see Algawana and we see these projects and they're very successful and their floors are high. And, you know, I think people think that maybe the ecosystem's a little bigger currently than it actually is. So it's good. I mean, I mean, to me, that was a, a great decision. Um, yeah. Did you have anything that you wanted to add to that, Shaman? No, I mean, I agree. I think that, you know, the 10K mint was probably a little ambitious for sure for the current size of the ecosystem. Um, you know, Coop, like you mentioned with the AFKs, they kind of came out, they said 10,000. And then I think they ended up only minting, at least for right now, it was like 1,900 or 2,000. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it was 2,000. But yeah, you know, like their mint, mint price is also really very like 300 bucks, I think. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. like also really ambitious. Yeah, and I think too, you know, um, you know, at the time I remember when MetaPunks launched, people were some people were like, oh, uh, you know, eighty five for the the whitelist or the, the pre sale. Um, they're like, oh, you know, that's a little bit high. And a lot of NFTs they kind of start off at like you know twenty five algo or whatever it might be, but then an AFK comes after you guys and goes for three hundred. And I was like, you know, people aren't paying attention because even the eighty five too. I mean, I think you guys got got away with it, but it was definitely you know towards the higher end. Um, so, you know, I'm glad you guys scaled it back. I think, you know, making that scarcity, um, you know, personally, I hold a whole bunch of Metapunks as, as well as I know a whole bunch of people in Algonauts do as well. So, <laughs> yep. So um, couple, maybe yeah. it's a little, a little biased on my part, looking out for myself, but, um, you know, I think that you, what you guys did was, was the smart move and in the long run, it'll help you guys grow. So, um, you know, it, it'll pay off in the long run for sure. So, okay, so what is the, um, you know, this is the thing that appealed to everybody from the, there's use. This isn't just a JPEG. I can do this. This can be my avatar in the metaverse, you know, everything. Like we all hear about the metaverse and I mean, how close or what are your thoughts on this? What is the actual use case for my Metapunk? Can I go, can I use my Metapunk right now in Roblox? I don't play Roblox, but I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, it's a hard question. So I love idea of metaverse and life idea of 3d avatars but when we research deeply the old project of nft uh, the old 3d nft avatars when we research all metaverse we understand that it's really early stage ecosystem like technically it's easy so now you can use your metapunks wherever it's allowed to use it so if some platform in metaverse allowed to down to lo uh, upload the 3d model so you can do it now so we support all integration that we can support for now and then and on the other side when we see uh, our community how they use metapunks we see that a lot of them like ar feature that i like i love too so much but almost nobody try to animate his metapunk so almost nobody tried to use metapunks in metaverse so it's it doesn't it doesn't seem like use cases for all of them, right? So we try to maybe hold for a while this 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 future because mm -hmm. we, first we have to maybe weigh the new functionalities of metaverses. Mm -hmm. 
You, right. you can integrate now in Roblox. You can integrate now in Mozilla Hub. There is, we have a very huge instruction about the MetaPunks integration. But right. when we see that somebody use it, we'll try to grow it. Now, I don't Got see it. it first. So, okay. So if I, so yep. if I, I, I hear you correctly, you can, you can currently, you could use it in Roblox and Mozilla yeah. uh, Hub. And um, it's, you have the directions or the instructions to do so. But what you're noticing is that people are more just kind of like wanting to put their, you know, their, their Metapunk like in their driveway or something using AR or having like fun pictures that they're, you kind of create with your Metapunk, putting your Metapunk maybe in real life or something like that. And yeah. so you're, so what you're saying is, it's like, yes, but the metaverse is more an idea. Like, look, I know a lot about the metaverse. Have I ever actually been inside of Decentraland and done any of that or, you know, wherever sandbox? I actually haven't. I mean, so it's not like the VR thing is there's a lot of people talking about it, but there's not a whole lot of people actually participating in it. Right. Is that kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's, yeah. There's also a problem that uh, like metaverse projects, they in the first place want to earn money and so on. That's why. Like uh, almost every metaverse project uh, doesn't allow to upload some custom avatars because they provide their own avatars and that's more profitable for, for them. Okay. Our like goal was ambitious uh, also because we thought that everybody will allow to upload uh, 3D models because why not? But yeah. now this yeah. is not the case, so but we need also to wait. If we talk about like 3D avatars, so for first of all, we try to find some integrations. So we try to to, get, uh, to have some game partners maybe where we can use our avatars. Mm -hmm. And the second, we just look all the time to the metaverse projects and something like that and try to find the new ways. But now I tried all metaverses. I try to be here to to visit some concerts and stuff. But I don't want to go on it on the second time. So I tried it once I spent like one hour and that's mm -hmm. all. So, you know, I don't feel now that it's something that we'll use maybe a lot of time, you know? Yeah, but still, uh, I don't know, uh, have you seen it or not? We had like a uh, meet up with our holders, like in Zero yeah. Hub. Yeah, I saw it. Was, it was pretty fun. <laughs> It was <laughs> like just uh, ten, 10 people, people or so, but you know, we have actually pretty, like cozy conversation and it was really uh, profitable for us because we I think we had like our most supportive holders there so we had like mm -hmm. really good conversations about the future plans and it was really nice like to see each other face to face like yeah like if we have a real meeting punk to punk I mean. yeah <laughs> yeah so yeah. you were able so using what what did you use like mozilla or something and uh, yeah yeah, yeah, mozilla yeah. Hubs. so you were able to um so 10 of your holders were able to show up <clears throat> with their metapunk and you guys were able to have a conversation about metapunks yeah, we yeah, had yeah, a, we all, yeah, we had meetings. Yeah, we also had. Yeah, we also had voting. Yeah, we also had like a small gallery of uh, works for our AR competition, and we had like a voting like inside the, this meetup. And after that, we also had like a draw among all the uh, our guests. So we draw like a random metapunk. It also had like a. It was a live translation, so it was really fun. We had some some fun you know in metaverse that's cool so that <laughs> potentially i mean is the idea for like the dow maybe there to be these types of uh you know metapunk kind of metaverse meetups for the dow and like this is like i mean that's to me that's super compelling and fun like that you know the metaverse project is meeting up in the metaverse i mean it makes a lot of sense but yeah, and it was sort of yeah. funny because we can create our 2D space, we can add some animation or uh, we can add our music. That was really fun. And I think that's yeah. the kind of future that we can do. Cool. Yeah, and uh, uh, another idea we have, but it's not in our short-term plans, but mm -hmm. maybe in the second part of the year, is to build uh, a custom metaverse, which, like Algorand metaverse, which maybe will be not super will not have super cool graphics or not going to be super advanced, but uh, allow a blockchain integration with it. So for example, uh, there are, we accept that there will be more uh, 3D uh, NFT collections in general mm -hmm. and on our grant as well. And for example, it might make sense to make a market inside of Metaverse. So yeah, you can roam like in a gallery 
and yeah. see uh, avatars in 3D, and it might be interesting for people. I I think so, and I think that they've done. Sorry, Andrew, I'm going to let you go real quick, and but. I think that they have done some version, which I did not attend, but some version of a 3D uh, auctions and stuff like that. Have you guys, have you seen those? Have you been part yeah. of those? Yeah. Yeah, we had, yeah sorry. No, and I was just going to say that sounds like, I mean, that would be a, an incredible project for you. I mean, it sounds, is that what you're saying? Like something like that, but like native to Algorand that you're you're thinking about building? Yeah, but it, I want to notice that it's just one of ideas, so we are not yeah. like, Super sure because it's um, it will require a lot of resources and our resources are quite limited for now. But it is one uh, of ideas we're looking and uh, about that actually you mentioned. Uh, I think it was uh, at least just pictures, so you can buy NFTs, but it's just mm -hmm. pictures and you're just having them on the walls. But it would be mm -hmm. probably cooler if there will be a full 3D models, maybe animated. Yeah, that would be cooler. Oh, yeah. yeah, I know I went to the, the auction. I did it in, I think it was in Mozilla Hubs, but um, it was a lot of fun. I mean, the engagement was there. Uh, it was kind of cool to be like in person, um, mm -hmm. you know, rather than just behind the screen, even though I mean, you're still behind the screen, but still, um, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I think it's an interesting idea. And, um, you know, if you guys do look more into it and, and plan to launch something like that, I mean, definitely let me know and I'd, I'd love to hear more about it. Um, and I'd also love to hear more about the meta token. I know that was kind of something that was um, initially discussed, go along with the, you know, your meta DAO. Um, what, are, what are the plans there? Has anything changed? Do you have any kind of timeline that you'd like to share with uh, the viewers or anything you'd like to touch on with that? Um, yeah, well, you know, uh, Valeria, you can, oh, yeah, you can, <laughs> you can tell more. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, so... Um, we don't have an exact release date, but uh, probably it will be pretty soon, maybe in the next two months or so. And uh, right now, in the following days, actually, we plan to launch it today, not the talking, but uh, the thing I'm talking about. We have one uh, smallish project. It is uh, a small blockchain game. And uh, we... Uh, are thinking about uh, making this game at the same time as a token sale. So this is a game where you can buy in game items, something like that, and you can spend algo. And also there are some uh, buffs which you can use. And you can, uh, when you are, um, and also there are bets in this game. So it's pretty simple, but and I don't want to share all the details right now, but you're making well, bets. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so you said you can spend algo or and make bets. Yeah. Is that? I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are spending algo to participate mm -hmm. in this game, and you get a, a meta token mm -hmm. for your bets, and you can also spend that meta token in the game. Got it. But at the same time, you can just keep it because it is basically a gamification of a public offering. Got it. And we're just planning to sell a small amount of meta token maybe like a few percent of initial supply because it's something experimental and we are not sure how it will go but i think it's an interesting idea yeah i also want to add that you know maybe you can like our holders can see some pause in our project that's like we try to think a lot because we want to add economics that make that we want to make a great economics to provide real utility for our token. We, we talk about it a lot. We, tr we don't want to like, you know, yeah. one more token that you can just buy, grab somewhere and do nothing with that. So yeah. we think a lot, we try to maybe combine some easy game or try to find another project or try to find like partners who can help us to calculate all of that. So yeah, it's really hard to create a great strategy. And yeah, maybe we are stuck a little bit. We had a lot of brainstorm on that, but yeah, I hope we'll finalize everything to calculate it, to have some um, mathematical model on that, and after that we'll publish it. Yeah, it's. I think it's that type of like the tokenomics are easily easier said than done, and it's easier to critique somebody's tokenomics and actually come up with something that is. Uh, you know that actually works well so if i'm understanding correct so yep. okay so the the meta token is coming in the next couple of months and so if you are a holder of or go ahead sorry go ahead nikita 
Yeah, yeah, I can elaborate on that a bit. That's actually like uh, the next several months is like actually too long. It will be like much sooner. Like <laughs> as I don't know <laughs> why are you laughing, guys? What's the problem? Like <laughs> we're delivering pretty fast, no? Uh, actually, like our main like uh, focus on the next several months will be like great yield farming, as far as you know, like. Because we need, we think that uh, Algorand needs such platform where projects could uh, launch their tokens and incentivize like uh, ho uh, holders and equity providers for their work. And we want like to add yes, yeah, some tokenomics on that, and that's why we will start with a small game. And uh, in some period after that, we will release like the actual yield farming. And uh, yes, just to elaborate on some. We hope that it will be next month, but all the time we try to create something else, yeah. blah, 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 so, <laughs> you know. So, okay, yeah. so there, so currently, so just so I'm understanding, so, okay, so there's the MetaDAO, which you guys were kind of like, look, we're not going to wait for on-chain treasury management and all of that right now. We want to get started. So now you have, I think it's, what, 10% of... All uh, is it profit or income goes into the DAO? I believe right. just recently you guys swept the floor of um, MetaPunks. Is that right? Right. Be... So just to be clear, right? The MetaDAO, okay. the first part of MetaDAO, it's our Meta Treasury, and yeah. I think it's a nice goal to have like collective mind that try to create the best NFT collection and try to sell something, buy something to support the project, to get Algavanas if we can do that. And that's mm -hmm. really nice. So there's a technical restriction. In the ideal world, we, we need to do it on chain, but we need to add some infrastructure to add some smart contract for that. So mm -hmm. we decided to start it from Discord. It's very nice that we have a bot that can check, do you have MetaPunks or not? So this is the first part, to make right. a very nice uh, portfolio. The second part is protocol DAO. So will we launch the yield farming or some, I don't know, like decentralized machine, whatever. So when we launch it, so the protocol DAO, the MetaPunks holders will, um, <laughs> will, will make decisions. On, uh, I'm sorry for my, for my English today. So. No, no, the MetaBank holders and MetaDAO will make decisions on um, and try to. I forget the word. <laughs> Nikita, yeah. can you help me? Because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, but their first decisions will be like on the emissions of Meta Token to incentivize like uh, the liquidity providers, like because it will be. Uh, like we will because such tokenomics like a yield farming it should be like sometimes uh, set up like to tune its uh, constants like for it to work better like to control the like the price of the token and so on and we think that it's good for community to control such things as well as uh, in the first place we will decide what projects like to launch in the first place in our platform and our holders will also vote on that so it will be like the first decisions they will make uh, there yes uh, and more to go after that got it yeah so, and uh, mm -hmm. i want to add uh, two points on this so to be clear uh, the game i mentioned we want to watch it pretty soon and we will use uh, meta token in it so you'll be able both to earn and both to spend meta token on it but it will be just uh, a small percent of supply, very mm -hmm. limited because it's something like pretty experimental. What we're doing and we just want to see how it goes. We are not ready to like just sell everything using this method and uh, doing airdrops and like general large launch will be probably at the same time when we will launch yield farming. This is our plan. And uh, about okay. uh, the DAO, yeah, mm -hmm. another point, sorry. Um, well, okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we are slowly moving to be more decentralized. So right now we launch uh, the watching in Discord. It's not perfect, but it's already something. Then we will probably watch with tokens. So we will just drop some tokens. We will be maybe not sellable, but used for watching. Then we will move to smart contracts, and uh, we will still be uh, as the founders. It will be still not 100% automated, but uh, in, in the long future, 
we are planning to slowly move to the to making it 100% decentralized and automated. Got it. So let me just see. So if I understand, so if, just in case anybody out there is confused. So you have a small game that you're going to launch that we're going to be able to use Algo to participate in, and we'll be able to win meta tokens through this game. So it's kind of like a gamified way to allow people in on the initial release of some of the, some of the tokens. And you're saying you're not yeah. going to put a huge percentage of the tokens in this game. It's just going to be more like to see how it goes and a way for people to get their hands on the meta token. And then after that, there will be the airdrop for meta meta punk holders. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That's right. And so then, and then there'll be the meta punk uh, airdrop, and then there'll be, and then you're going to launch things like yield farming and different and different ways to kind of um, you know so encourage people to hold and stake and support. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Cool. Yeah, and, then, no, and, then, and then in the future. Um, if you get the resources, you might be building like metaverse, like uh, art houses or auction houses, or you, you guys are going to be constantly looking to kind of innovate and build new cool things on Algorand in the metaverse. <laughs> yeah, well, that's right. Actually, that's our point. And yeah. we are sometimes thinking, is it uh, really, is it a good thing that we sometimes change our mind on some topics, like on what is better to do? Because like uh, people want for team to be sure in what they do, but the thing is that market is changing constantly. That's why we need like uh, to uh, to adopt to what happened, and uh, that's why like we had an idea of doing like the centralized exchange. Like we we really wanted to do that because like everybody wants to have a decentralized exchange. But then we realized that many teams now on Algorand already are developing the uh, exchange. So we don't need to do like, I don't know, 10 exchanges. And that's why we decided not to do it. But uh, in the future, we will see how our competitors will do. Maybe that exchanges won't like be perfect. And then we will do our own. That's why now we are like uh, focusing on yield farming because there are no many projects that do that. But we need that it's crucial for the early uh, like developing of the ecosystem. So, yeah, and also, so I want to add that we want to build something that we love to do, that we love to build, and also that's something the ecosystem needs. And we try to combine it all. So yield farming, it's not only because the ecosystem needs it, but also because our my co-founders know a lot about yield farming. They know like a bunch of projects in all blockchains told me about it a lot. So I feel that we have expertise in that and we'll, we can do something interesting and something that's really useful for people. That's, I mean, we definitely need that. I mean, yeah. there's only, you know, we only have, well, really one location right now to do something like that. So yeah, there's definitely, yeah. Uh, there is a need for that. All right, what are you thinking? I, I feel like I'm talking too much. Uh, You're Andy, doing great, Coop. That's oh, why thanks. I bring you yeah, around. Nice. <laughs> you stay in the back and yeah, <laughs> no, you, you're yeah, good. But... So uh, what? Uh, what? What else? What did I leave out? What do you? What do you oh, got? Yeah, after? yeah. Uh, we we actually uh, maybe I could elaborate a bit about like our team because uh, like uh, now our project was uh, have been moving slowly for the recent month or two, but uh, that was because we were uh, like constantly hiring and trying to find like uh, proper people for our team. And now this is the case. Like we already had uh, the sales and communications manager. And now we found like a designer for our front end side, as well as we find a front end developer who will uh, like help us to build the actual like interface for the yield farming and all our products. And also, we have a really good guy in mind for the smart contracts development, which will also like increase the speed of development. Because like now, only one person in our team doing that, and he's doing great. <laughs> but still, yeah, we need new power. So, oh, and actually, we also found like a really good guy for marketing. We found him like uh, a few weeks ago, but he had uh, family issues. So he will start only next week, but still, 
like now our team is, I would say, pretty big already because we started like three people and now it's already like eight people and that's good. I think that project will project will go yeah, really fast. Keep growing, yeah. And the, we've been looking for front-end developer for a long time and all of us have technical experience, but none of us are like front-end guys. And uh, it was uh, pretty hard to do because uh, the state of market is that it's pretty hard to find a decent front-end developer, either yeah. somebody who is like super junior and who will require a lot of guidance from us and we want a person who can just own it yeah. or somebody who is like super expensive who asks like at least ten thousand dollars per month or something like that and we were interviewing a lot of people and finally we found a person who we think will be a good match and yeah yeah, yeah to, to be honest and if we go deep to our like what happened in our project we we had a lot of interview technical interview with uh candidates like for front end and for marketing and it's really hard to find somebody so yeah. first of all we're really happy that one person tried to go through our technical interview because it's really high level i, I just I, I was surprised but it really is so mm -hmm. I, I hope he'll join us soon and also with marketing there's still problem to find a very nice specialist Mm -hmm. I don't know, but we are really care about it. So yeah, I hope it'll be. Well, we, it'll be. well we were just in uh, Denver, um, Andrew and I, and one of the main things you hear from everybody at ETH Denver was uh, we're hiring. <laughs> like everyone's like, please. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Like, <laughs> everyone is. <laughs> like, uh, li literally. Uh, so, it, man, did I make a mistake not becoming a, uh, you know, you know, learning computer science, but that's okay. Uh, I'm doing this. Well, even like marketing, though. I mean, like, you know, like, yeah. you know, the metaphor yes, you're trying to lay with, yes. you know, I get people come up to me all the time. They're like, do you know a community manager? Do you know someone from marketing? Do you know, you know, front end? Do you know back end? Do you know, yeah. you know, do you know a janitor? I mean, it's like everyone, just everything. So, yeah. right. We feel this pain too, really, because, yeah, just, <laughs> I just want to share it, guys. It's really hard. Uh, yeah. 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 Actually, yeah. guys, uh, for watching, we're still hiring. So if you yeah, are guys, interested, hiring. please. <laughs> You're like, you haven't stopped. So you said, so you said your team has grown to eight people. Is that what? Did I just hear that? Yeah. It's grown no, to eight people. I'm yeah. Really. And well, then there, yes. okay, there's some other things yeah. that I saw on your website that you're um, you're aiming towards, like like a 3D constructor. So is this something going to be like a tool? Is the idea <clears throat> that it's going to be like a tool that I can go to a website and like kind of create my own avatar yeah so yeah. we're thinking about it now that i told before right so um for, for sure we have an option to create the custom avatar so mm -hmm. we'll provide the per some challenges maybe competition some events where we our designers <clears throat> can create very nice 3d punks maybe you saw our custom collections i really love it so yeah, yeah. Really good. this is will be for sure about custom 3d avatar we're thinking now because again You'll create the avatar, but how will you use it? There is no such infrastructure for that. We are thinking mm -hmm. about it now. And also, I think we'll make a decision after, after we launch Shield Farming first. Got it. And that, you just made me think about this. This is kind of like not um, uh, what you just said. But where did the artistic impression or um, in, uh, inspiration, where did the artistic inspiration for Metapunks come from? Like just the aesthetic, the design. <laughs> I told you, I told you. So I was inspired of 3D fashion. I was inspired of 3D uh, custom clothes. Maybe, you know, dress X replicant fashion. I was really inspired in that. So we wanted to create something similar. We wanted some to create the fashion stylish guys. Mm -hmm. And in our style that we love to add some, you know, nice clothes. So we work with 3D designers from Italy, I remember, as I remember. So she created a very nice puffer and different puffer. So, so yeah. uh, he, he, she did it like for the fashion collection, just a sketch in, in 2D. And after that, he created 3D. And after that, she provided us. So mm -hmm. I was inspired of that. I was part of our style and just like a stylish guy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's cool. You can tell I, with the, like some of the sweaters and the big chunky shoes, like there's definitely like a fashion forward feel to them. So it's cool. Um, yeah. All right. Well, what else, what else, uh, Shaman, what, what am I missing here? 
Uh, honestly, I was looking through our list of questions. I think we touched on most of them. Um, one question I know I've seen quite a bit, and I know you guys are working with Kraken, I believe, on it, but oh, yeah. uh, to get on, on, on Rand Gallery. <laughs> Look, this I don't is, know if guys. we can to touch on this, but. <laughs> She's struggling. I know. What's happening? Why not run right. Rand? Uh, yeah. So, and it is, uh, oh, I think he'll come back. So, <laughs> it's like, really the problem. <laughs> Return me, please, he said. <laughs> Yeah, we right. are there. There he is. Okay. In a yeah, thank you. Weird <laughs> situation currently uh, regarding Korean gallery listing. So initially, we uh, it was just problematic to reach them in general. So we applied through official form, got no reply. Tried to reach them through email, which was not easy to find. Right now, it's easy to find, but before it, you had to Google for a while. Mm -hmm. And we just waited and got no reply. And so it took some time for us to reach them. And after we did that, uh, they were not super responsive. So Kraken had uh, some uh, considerations about the project, which might block rent uh, gather listing. There are two main considerations, or maybe only two. The mm -hmm. first consideration was regarding licensing stuff. And... Um, uh, some uh, clothing and uh, other parts of models we use were either mm -hmm. bought from stock uh, galleries or some were even free. Some were made by us, some were made by designers, but there are many different sources. And uh, there was a question about is it like Lato? And uh, a long time before, before lunch, maybe uh, two more, three weeks before the lunch, we had a discussion in uh, our Discord channel about licensing. So somebody brought this issue and uh, noticed uh, that in his experience, probably that not something we can just do. But actually, we took that question very serious. We contacted all the galleries. We contacted all the 3D artists we worked with. And we contacted legal people. We discussed it with them. And uh, we do not violate any kind of license. Because even if we use, uh, for example, even if there are pants which we bought at the stock market, uh, it's perfectly legal to use it if you just don't sell the stock. If you, we sell a whole 3D model, which was all parts we modified and color it, and uh, optimized for uh, real-time 3D, so polygon right. reduction. And uh, it's uh, impossible to just uh, get Metapunk just do like control C and get some uh, original model from the stock. And uh, all the uh, three markets we used, we contacted all of them and discussed it with them. And everyone told us it's perfectly fine. And mm -hmm. I brought it in much detail to end gallery. And uh, another issue was uh, regarding uh, the DAO. So one of our initial ideas was that uh, royalties some part of royalties is going to meta treasure and uh, in uh, some sense uh, meta punk holders own the meta treasure but uh, first of all they do not own it directly so they can't claim a part of it so the problem was that uh, it may violate u.s security law so we don't think it uh, actually uh, violates this law and i think there are some projects which are really already has the same in a list at Trend Gallery. But mm -hmm. additionally, mm -hmm. we are super happy to like, go forward and uh, discuss it with community. And uh, if it is a problem, if it's actually violated, and if it's actually unclear, we are OK to remove this feature. Yeah. And we discuss it with community. If community wants it to, for removal. And uh, we communicate it to Trend Gallery. Mm -hmm. But uh, since that moment, we basically got no response. And it's pretty complicated position for us because if they said, like, we don't like our project, we will not list it, bye. we would understand what the situation. But because they're not very communicative, we are not sure, are they not happy with our arguments or maybe there's something else or maybe they're super busy. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. And I mean, well, I know I know Kraken personally or... I don't want to say personally, I guess through 
all the online stuff. And I know he's, he is a super busy guy. Um, you know, to my knowledge, he was pretty much the only one running grand. Um, but you know, I can't really speak on his behalf, you know, obviously. Um, so hopefully you guys will be able to work that out. I mean, I love Rand gallery. I think it's a great place. Um, you know, I think it's the largest marketplace on Algorand by, by quite a bit. I think they do about 50 over 50% of the sales, um, then AB2 gallery. And then, you know, there's some of the other marketplaces under there. Um, so hopefully you guys will be able to, figure out what's going on with that um it's, yeah it's definitely yeah, you know, the... we love the guy we love the guy he's really cool like actually he created such cool service on his own and it's like mm. i don't know it's crazy like my my respect to him but we just don't know how to really to communicate with him like he's why yeah he's too... we write him a lot of texts and like we all did it and our friends did it and we have computer and he just he doesn't answer. So yeah. let me just, just in case people are a little um, unclear and so, and, and make sure that I'm clear. So the two issues are a, that you guys have licensed, you know, maybe some like the pants, I believe he said, or like different outfits or, you know, whatever, like what most NFT projects do. Right. So you, yeah. you might license out this like, and you know, so there might be a certain pair of pants from one place and then there might be a sweater from another place. You guys are, and so one of the concerns are for Rand, like, do you, is it, uh, is it okay? Like, is everything, you know, no you guys, copyrights yeah, or yeah, no copyright issues whatever. and all of that. And you guys looked into it and talked to everybody, all the people, you talked to all the people and they're like, yeah, no, this is fine. Just as long as it's on one thing and you're not selling these reselling these pants by itself. Yeah, is that right? Yeah, and exactly. yeah, you're right. No. And a lot of projects did it. So, for example, if you have the basic hat, you don't need to create it by your own because it's like the same hat everywhere. So you just can buy it on the market, yeah. and it's pretty fine. And it's fine. And then the second issue is, and this is where I think I got a little confused, and that's uh, the main reason why I'm asking this, is that because with my MetaPunk, I can't fully own the entire thing. There's concern with the meta DAO that it could be considered a security. Yeah, so the security it means that you own the part of meta treasury. No, mm. uh, meta boy, you can say. So yeah, yeah. we we had we had feature that you the part of second the, the some percent of secondary sales come to meta treasury. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's like we promise in come for houses, so it becomes a security. Got it. So for each bit of punk you hold, yeah, you get whatever X percent of the uh, the Dow treasuries that. Oh, that would have been cool. Sales. Yeah, that would be a cool thing to do for sure. But there, but the concern is security laws. Got it. Got it. Okay. Well, hopefully you'll you know it. It, it sounds like you guys. One thing that I've noticed, you know, I've been paying attention, uh, not like full on, but from my end, what I see is that when things. You know, don't go great. You guys are always on Discord or right now you're here. You know, you guys are always trying to just be honest and address everything and be honest being like, hey, guys, like, look, we're trying to figure out the best way to move this forward. You're not like pretending that you got all the answers. So that's something that I appreciate. And um, so I'll I'll I'm going to hold my Metapunks and I'm going to, you know, go on the ride with you guys for sure from my end. I don't know. I don't know. Shaman's probably out. He's on. He's on uh, AB two right now selling. What are you doing? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I did sell one of mine, but honestly, okay. it's just because I didn't like it. So, um, but all my other ones are very cool. So, okay, cool. Um, yeah. I mean, well, I, don't I've, you? You own number zero, don't you? I own number zero. Yeah, I own. Yeah, I, own yeah. I own a few. Yeah, I own number zero. Yeah. I got a number six. Cool is actually pretty cool too. It's. A, I gave that one to my girlfriend. It's a. <laughs> oh wow. Nice. Yeah, she's got like this nice little like dress on and this hat. She actually looks pretty slick. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've got a green beard. I like my green beard. Um. All right. Yeah. Well, so we should we should mention we should mention again that uh, on our website, like which is app metapunk.world, you can go there and like slash metapunk slash your number and you can get like three different pictures of your metapunk like not just oh, yeah. one but you got all three so if nobody if somebody didn't know before yeah we should probably check it out right. because yeah, like it's a model and we have some photos yeah i just want to mention that we have a feature that nobody uh, that nobody mentioned before so with our avatars the punks have has had no gender 
like we have a 3D uh, generator, right? Just the code who generated, and there is no gender, so he can. We can say it's a girl or man. So it's just no. a bug. And it's very nice enough. Enough for the metaphors. <laughs> yeah, okay, come on. <laughs> like... We gotta be. Uh... Well, they. We'll refer to them as they. And my uh, <laughs> my uh, my person has a, a big green beard. So unless uh, I'm I'm Everyone. taking the clue. Uh, but uh... <laughs> um, okay. Well, look. Oh, meta bridges. What about the bridges? You guys have bridges on a, on the roadmap as well, right? Yes. Well, <laughs> yeah, oh, yes. yeah. We know we have. You're like, we can't answer that down. The thing is that we 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 actually wanted to do some bridges to other blockchains, and we think that. Yeah, Crossbridge future is near and we need like to go in that way. Uh, like we were thinking also about some metaverse which would connect uh, different blockchains like off chain, for example, like because we like understand that everything needs to be like in the same area, like all the projects, all the blockchains that will be connected soon. But the thing is that we uh, a, bit, a bit underestimated like uh, the... The difficulty of development on algorithms so that's why our plans like uh, shifted a bit or not a bit that's why our like uh, bridges idea it also moved like to q4 like uh, we hope that we will start uh, to develop uh, bridges right there and we'll see what our ecosystem will have for the moment because maybe there will be enough bridges for the moment and yeah, yeah. but if not yeah. then we we'll we already have a partner who help us with bridges on those sites, like on Ethereum or Solana or somewhere else. Uh, we need maybe also to write our own smart contract for the algorithm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, we have partners, we have it, but I think it's um, our maybe second or third priority after the yield farming. Got it. Awesome. Cool. And you're going to drop 200 more on Algo Gems, right? Or did that already happen? Um, so we... Now we discuss with Algo Gems. Is it possible also? Because we had uh, we had conversation with them that yeah we can do that. But now he said like you can do just for one. You can you can just set auction for one metapunks, not for a bunch of them. So okay. we are discussing it again. Is it technically okay or not? Or maybe we just do a small drop. And, and Everyone, so yeah, just keep on, yeah, consistent. Yeah, we will have some drops like in the future, but when we see that we have more attention to like metapunks, because now we had some silent period, and uh, yeah, now we cannot do some drops, but in the future, yes, we will have, and it will be something fun for sure, because we want like to entertain our community, you know. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. I mean, and you know, one, and it sounds like you guys are trying to get it right, but you know, once there's a token and once there's use case for that token, it's the excitement will, you know, I, I have a feeling will start to increase, right? That's the calm before the storm. Calm before the storm. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah I right. think, I think yeah, you know, we are really small team. It's our first NFT project to, to be honest, right? For first own. And maybe it's, it feels like now it's hard for us to manage something, but at least it's very nice to look from the other side for us and see how this guy doing this, <laughs> how they how can manage <laughs> this problem, or can we do that or not? And it's yeah. a very great challenge for us also. So we just look at us and like, can we do that? I think we can, but yeah, let's see what's happening. There. <laughs> right, <laughs> exactly. Well, I think you guys just continuing to get feedback from the community. You know, I think that's going to be key. I see you guys are always in Discord asking, hey, we're thinking about doing this. What do you guys think? You know, I think asking the people who are holding MetaPunks and who are involved, um, that's going to be your best bet going forward. You know, I'll see a lot of the NFT projects. It's the community that's going to really make or break them. So, um, you know, I think you guys are doing a good job on that front and staying engaged, you know, coming on shows like this, you know, you're on Algo HQ a month or two ago i don't know time flies a little bit ago you were on algo hq um you know it's good to see have you on the recoup um so i think if you guys just continue to to build that out you guys will you know you'll be fine thank you <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, all right our best. yeah no I, I, that's that's <clears throat> what um that's what it feels like this is awesome all right guys well i if there's nothing else that you would like to you know if you want to let anybody know. So you mentioned that you can get three different images of your Metapunk on the website, which maybe some people don't know. Um, is there other, and you also can, 
use your Metapunk on um, like Roblox and things like that. And you have directions on how to do that. And uh, yeah, and you can also animate them, and it's pretty easy to do. So and it's easy not to a do. lot of people doing it. Yeah, just you just import and choose animation. With just a few steps. Okay, well then I'm gonna try to do that. I need to. I need to do that. And so then, once you animate it, what can you like? Uh, how do you? You can now you own it. Like you can download it and share it. Your little like Metapunk animation. Well, you know, it's also some good feature uh, that we uh, like. Also, I think have a guide how to do it. Like you can do a small QR code, for example, and uh, paint it and put it somewhere, and then you can like move your camera to this QR code, like of any kind of phone and you will see like uh, your dancing metapunk like uh, just in uh, your space or something and actually like um, two months ago we had a small uh, exhibition like it was an nft exhibition in the uh, Belize, and we were uh, like uh, one of three projects there and we had like a big qr code on the floor and everybody like all the guests they could like they will, yes, uh, put their phones on this code and like in the whole space, like music and everything and our metapunk just dancing. And it was, you know, you know like some kind of uh, a state of art exhibitions where like it's like virtual goods, like what they're here in the space and you can see it. Uh, it's also is a, a use case for it. It's fun. And actually like some spaces in Belize now I covered with these QR codes and everybody who like just uh, focus their phones on there. They see our metapunks. Yes. yes. Cool. Like that. that sounds cool. All right. Awesome. Well, look, Daria, Nikita, and Metaboy, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having thank us. You. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. It was really fun and really nice to talk to you guys. And yeah, I hope our holders and all who see for us, they, I don't know, understand our plans and our feelings and yeah cool welcome to the metaverse <laughs> <laughs> and then for anybody wondering don't mess with nikita because he's got the uh he's got that right hook uh, for sure mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> all right i don't know i'm like that what a i'm like talking like a dad got the dad jokes all right all right guys all right thank you yeah cheers guys cheers